From the Live X Studios in New York City, Cheesehead TV brings you two guys who like to think they know something about football. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to Packer Transplants Live. I am Aaron Nagler, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Corey Banke, my partner here at Cheesehead TV. I'm coming to you live from the Cheesehead TV podcast studio in Midtown Manhattan. Corey joins us across the street from Lambeau Field, and we are ready to talk some Packers. What do we have on tap today, Corey? Today, we talk about a new defensive coordinator for the Green Bay Packers and a look at Brian Gutenkunst's drafting history. But right now, it's time for the good, the bad, and the ugly. We got the good. We got a new defense. We got the bad we got. Watching another team win the Lombardi Trophy. We got the ugly we got. And of football season. I can't handle this staring into the abyss of the offseason, Banky. You know, no more football games for, what, six months? Maybe more. I can't handle it. Yeah, that, there I, is no offseason, though. No. That's what we've learned around here. Really yeah, okay, no fine. Yes, there's lots of stuff to talk about, but not football games. You know, the whole reason we True. enjoy the Green Bay Packers is because they play the game of football. True. How you doing, Banky? How's your offseason going? Uh, it was all right. It was kind of annoying to watch the Niners look like the Packers. Uh... It is kind of interesting, though, isn't it? Watching that Super Bowl, seeing how, you know, Somewhat the way the Packers couldn't get, you know, put it together there at the end against the Niners. Similarly, the Lions pretty much did the same. And then the 49ers pretty much did that against the Chiefs. It's like yep. the NFC just had to kind of run through it right to the Super Bowl where, you know, hey, Mahomes, that team, they're a juggernaut, man. And it makes it all the sweeter that the Packers beat them, although it kind of makes it more annoying. Yeah. Because you think we should have been in that game. Like, there's really no should. way you can sit here and tell me that, like, you know, the Lions or 49ers were that much better than the Green Bay Packers. Yes, the 49ers were better than the Packers that one Sunday afternoon into the evening. But, yeah, the Packers should have been in that game. That stuff makes me mad. It makes me mad. Uh, do want to give a shout-out to our friends at Nicolay Law. If you have a chance, if you're in the Wisconsin area and you need – any kind of legal help, make sure you give them a call or just check them out. You've got a link in the description of this video. Nicolay has teams that are personally dedicated to each and every case. So when you hire Nicolay Law, you get an actual attorney that stays on your case and is your point of contact. You're not dealing with a bunch of bureaucracy, paralegals, etc. Their whole goal is to make you be able to kind of set it and forget it. You know, if you're dealing with an injury or an accident or anything of that nature, The worst thing is when you have something like hanging over your head for a very long time and you're constantly worrying about it. Let them worry about it. You get on with your life. That's the whole point. Nicolay Law. Like I said, check it out. Link in the description of this video. Um, That that said, Corey, I hope you're ready. Because just because it's the offseason doesn't mean there isn't any hotness to talk about. Let's get to it. Let's do it. It's time for the hotness. One of the more endearing parts of the Super Bowl was uh, Radio Row and an appearance by Jordan Love on pretty much every outlet imaginable. I mean, Jordan was on so many different podcasts, radio shows, etc. But one in particular, I think if you guys have watched Packers Daily at all since the Super Bowl, you've heard me mention it. Uh, Corey, I know you had tweeted about it. Uh, This appearance with Micah Parsons on his podcast, the whole hour is well worth your time. If you're a Packers fan, you absolutely should check it out. But one of my favorite bits was this little back and forth about Aaron Jones and the job he did on Parsons and Pass Pro in the wild card. I I love that from Jordan. I don't know, because he's right. If Aaron isn't there, it's probably a a bit of a disaster. There's one play in particular that I I know he's referencing where you saw it on NFL films where 
Jordan is going off his play action and he has to take the ball with his left hand and take it over Aaron because Aaron's not supposed to be there, but he's chipping and helping out on Micah Parsons. And afterwards, Matt kind of makes fun of makes fun of the situation saying, I don't recommend doing that, but it's like, because Aaron Jones knew if he doesn't break off, whatever his assignment is and make sure that Parsons is taken care of Jordan loves going to get killed. So you love it. I just, and I love hearing players talk ball like that. That stuff is so good. It's the absolute best. Uh, what else we got here, folks? Corey, you ready for some, uh, some Packers news? We got some yeah, Packers so news. Some. You know, not a ton because it is the offseason, but uh, the headliner of the offseason so far, obviously, is the firing of Joe Barry and the hiring of Jeff Halfley to be defensive coordinator. Corey, uh, I- I'd love to get your initial responses to both pieces of news uh because you know obviously i'm in new york you're in green bay we live very different lives i don't know what you were doing or what your response was to either of these kind of nuggets of news where were you when you heard and what was your reaction i was at a for a wine bar downtown and i actually spent the entire time tweeting about everything and i put i, I you know everybody was excited when it happened i think it's exciting and right we'll just have to see you know no question. No, no doubt about I mean, it. Everybody's, Very excited. everybody's excited that there's a change. Does change mean real change or more of the same? We'll, that's what we we'll see. shall see. Right. Um, I think it's interesting, too, in light of the news that literally broke a bit before we went live here that the 49ers, Cal Shanahan, has uh, fired his defensive coordinator after one yeah, year. I saw that. Bit of a different kind of tactic than Matt LaFleur trying to find continuity and give Joe Barry every chance. <laughs> Shannon gets to the Super Bowl and says, nah, you out. So <laughs> you know, it's going to be interesting to kind of compare and contrast those approaches. It is crazy. How, like, what do you have to do as are. a DC to keep your job? I just think that final drive in, in regulation, and there have been reports all throughout the season. I guess it was pretty public talking to some 49ers fans that, you know, there there was not, it was not a good mix between the two. And I think that final drive in regulation where the Chiefs basically march right down the field and kick the field goal to send it to overtime, uh, Shanahan was none too pleased with the approach there. Had to burn a timeout at, in the process. So it feels like some of this writing was a bit on the wall, so to speak. Um, I feel like the Niners are on a down- – I feel like the Niners, that they're going to be on a downward slope now. I feel like they're on well, the Well, it's a tough one, yeah. The, the fact that they've now – was the third time with Shanahan. They got two Super Bowl and lost, and – the fact that their contract situations are just yikes town, you know? Also, and also let's be real about Brock Purdy for two seconds. He fucking sucks. Oh okay? boy. Like he literally <laughs> sucks. He, I don't think anything he sucks. Over, I think he's got anything, limited upside. I think that, I think it's the classic case of the guy gets to the mm. Super Bowl and let's find all mm-hmm. the intangibles we can about how he got there. And again, right. this is a case where Shanahan's such a good coach, any fucking quarterback can kind of get there with him. And like, right. dude, what was his percentage of throws over 20 yards? I feel like it was like 40% or something, something atrocious. I mean, the guy Not cannot throw anything over 20 yards with any kind of like – resemblance of like it's gonna make it it's like if he's not in rhythm he fucking sucks he sucks he's got to be perfectly in rhythm on his stuff he's he's like the opposite of jordan love he just is the opposite yeah he's literally there's there's not a lot of uh there's not a lot of upside there but hey they were literally in the super bowl with him at quarterback i suspect there's not going to be a change there next year so it's gonna be interesting to see if they're able to make another run given the fact that they're, they're probably going to lose some pieces. Uh, I don't think there's any doubt yeah. there. Um, the other piece of Packers news, the Packers have announced a search committee for the new CEO headed up by Susan Finko of the executive committee. Uh, I got many messages from inside 1265 Lombardi, Corey. I don't know if you did, but uh, people going, here we go. The, the widening of the search. The search is on. And we all know it's supposedly going to just lead back to Ed Policy. It's not. I mean, building. what's we'll funny see. is, what's funny is, like, literally everybody knew Susan Vinko was doing this. I knew it, like, a month ago. I didn't even realize it was right. news because I was, like, because it was just an, it wasn't, like, officially announced. I guess, like, people around right. town knew that that was happening. And I was yep. surprised when people said that it was because you're right. I mean, they have to do their due diligence. They have to check a checkbox. 
and they yep. got to make sure they went outside. But if it's not Ed Policy, we riot. <laughs> That's that's a fair assessment, Corey. That's, that's a very and what's funny is like, I know what have people we been doing in and outside the building what, who agree with you? What have we been doing if it's not Ed Policy? Like, why have we spent right. all this time? You know, he was largely yep. in charge of Title Town, which is a Title Town for the last like, three or four years. Everything yes, the guy 100%. has touched. You know, he didn't come up with Title Town Tech, but he definitely no, was no, a no, huge but he's part of it. A big part of and and, yep, and Mark is a big part of it. But like, if there's somebody who's been involved with everything the Packers have as far as local revenue and you know t- all the things, what's funny is considering his pedigree, he's actually been involved with more local things than which is crazy right executive i you know like, agreed yeah. and here's a guy who came from the outside who was like people forget he was like the ceo or the president of the arena league for a few years so he's literally run a football league you know what i mean he's got a really interesting background but i would have always thought he would have been more nationally facing and dealing with things involving the league but he has to your point he's done a lot to bring things together locally, including Title Town and Title Town Tech, and all the kind of initiatives the Packers have had their hands in over the course of the last, you know, however many years, I'm with you, man. It it feels well, like no, what also we, like if, if it's not yeah. him, what are we doing? Yeah, how how I'm with what I, my thinking too is like okay, he's got the local pedigree, he's locally proven himself within the team, which mm-hmm. normally right. that's a that's a detriment in the Packers, right? It's like there's a lot of people who have VP level jobs that they got their job because they were just like in the right place at the right time and they didn't really come from a place like, dude, the fact that he ran an arena league, the fact that he's got the pedigree he has, the fact that he knows every single person in the NFL, like how are you going to find right. somebody that knows everybody in the NFL <laughs> has, well, yeah. has I mean, the pedigree think about he his, has and, his family, and has, having been involved with the 49ers and the the Browns and hello. Yeah, no, I hear you. Well, and also like the, the, the dedication and loyalty he has for the Packers that he's proven at this point. So it's like, I, I don't even know thing. why you do. I don't even know why you do that's the search, the thing. but I guess, you know, you, you got to waste money. So you have to. No, no, no. You got, I know. Right. Oh my God. Don't even, don't even start with the, you got to get a consultant in. You got to get corn fairy in there it's to the get the same their two consultant, cents. by the way, they found I know Mark Murphy. That they found Mark Murphy with. I know, I know. Like Jed Hughes has got to get his pay cut. I, I I understand, but his cut. But like, look, to your point, like there had to have been a moment at some point in policy's time in Green Bay up till now, where there've undoubtedly been one or two nibbles from the outside. I can't imagine that there haven't been approaches made. And he's, to your point, he's stuck with Green Bay for a very uh, – uh, that's not where he grew up. He's got no local roots there. But he has clearly made Green Bay his home and beyond the Packers, right? So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on this. I'm 100% with you on this one. Um, finally, some uh, housekeeping when it comes to the Green Bay Packers – News, so to speak. Deadline looms for Nixon, Savage, and Nyman deals as far as February 19th, fast approaching. That is when their void years basically kick in, the void for their contracts. Um, And if the Packers do not sign any of the three to an extension, all of that money will go on to the 2024 salary cap will accelerate on immediately. Um, It's not a significant amount, but it adds up, right? You know, the... uh, I think the Nixon deal is a little over a, a million and a half. The Savage deal is about a little over five. And I think the Nyman deal is a li- around four. So, you know, that's a, a 10 plus million dollar cap hit that you're dealing with if you don't sign any of these guys to an extension. So we'll see. keep your eyes open for that because I think there's a good chance all three of them are gone. But I also think, you know, really? it wouldn't surprise me if one of them got an extension. It would surprise yeah, me I've, if Savage didn't get an extension. Isn't his contract time so he can get an extension pretty easily? I would think the rookie contract from 2018, well, they ha- isn't there like a... Well, they have to... But remember, they signed the deal. When they get a fifth-year option, they signed the kind of revised deal that put four void years onto it. And it. that deadline, February 19th, is coming up. So if they want to avoid that dead cap money... Now, look, they've done this before where they've had a guy's deal void and they've taken the dead cap hit and then re-signed him. They did that with Bob Tunyon a couple couple years ago. So we'll see. Like I said, it's a it's a somewhat small thing, but it like again, it adds up. I mean, did you this is the funny thing when I was kind of like going through these contract things and looking at the offseason, I forgot the fact that the Packers are 
like in 2023, we're dealing with a Randall Cobb dead money hit. Like those are things you don't think about because you see Randall Cobb like being benched by the Jets. And I'm like, oh boy, it's the end of his career. But we're Packers were still dealing with that on their books in 2023. Like those are the things. It's, it all kind of adds up. It's all stuff you got to deal with. Um, but hey, looking ahead, looking to the future, to the to the promise and the hope of the NFL draft. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we announced it at the start of this week. I'm sure you've seen it if you've been on cheeseheadtv.com, but did want to say here today, get ready, mark your calendars, April 3rd, the 14th annual Cheesehead TV Draft Guide is dropping. Mm. That's right. 14th time we've done this. The original draft guide for Packers fans by Packers fans. 2011 we've been doing this since 2011 Corey. that's kind of crazy, crazy. I, I can't believe that Brian i remember Gutekunst, when it was a total pain get in ready my ass. <laughs> i know you know what's funny i remember when winston moss looked at it and told us how good that was, was like the first year though that was like the first year the first or second year yeah yeah, yeah. but like yeah. I, I don't think it'll ever get that good again like a, a actual packers coach consuming the content and going this is pretty good like that i don't know i'll never i'll never feel a high like that again i mean i feel like i feel like i feel like there's (laughs) definitely some people in 1265 that buy it just to kind of peruse it for novelty's sake novelty's sake that they're not doing anything with it it's a novelty it's like oh no because can you imagine if can you imagine if like brian like brian like buys it on the sly and then he's like wrong wrong right, wrong to, right. but it's like his fun it's like his right. just fun it's like ha 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 these fools wow well these, what's funny is like, when brian morons. was on the when brian was on the podcast he said his whole his brother his brothers uh consume uh said tv content on the regular in fact this is a little inside baseball but one of his brothers is a patreon member so there you go brian come on brian you know your bros are looking at the Cheesehead TV draft guide. They're following well, along. Speaking speaking of Patreon, that means that they're going to get a. If one of them is Patreon member, they're going to get the draft guide for free. Well, if they are a producer, associate yep. producer, or executive producer level, yes, that's right. Anybody at those levels on the Patreon membership, you will get a draft guide for free. It becomes part of your Patreon membership. Uh, it will be available on Patreon. So all you got to do is go to your Patreon page the day it gets released on April 3rd. It'll be available for download for free. Thank you so much for the support. We really appreciate it. All right. Well, should we look at Brian Gutekunst's drafts now? Yeah. This is something Corey had the idea that he wanted to go back and look at all these drafts. And we don't want to look at the last two drafts yet because yeah, we're, everyone we're always talks about you got to give it before three years, 2021. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So everyone always says you got to give a draft three years. Well, let's go back to 2018 and get up to 2021 and take a look at these drafts and and see who's still with us and what's become of some of these guys and where did maybe Brian make a misstep or maybe kind of outfox some people and get some great value and things of that nature. Um, I think this is a a fun exercise, Corey. It's a really good idea Uh, going back and starting at 2018, his first draft. And I mean, what's crazy take? about 2018 is like the only guy is his number one pick. Only guy left on the team. Number only one, pick. one remaining. Only Jair one remaining. himself, no which, you know, I would argue is probably one of our best draft picks in the last five years, arguably. I and totally still, agree. Still, still critically important to the team. And then, you know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what you want to say about Jair besides that, but here's what's crazy. So Josh Jackson, bust. Mm-hmm. Oren Burks, bust. Oren Burks, by the way, was playing on Kansas City. Played right? in the Super Bowl. Yep. Yeah, no, I'm in the Super uh, San Francisco. San Francisco. San Francisco. Yep. Sorry. Sorry, my bad. Jamon Moore. Wow. Holy bust, Batman. Cole Madison. Playing in the UFL now, I believe. <laughs> J.K. Cole Madison Scott. never put it down. The still punting in the was. league. The weapon, the weapon still still was. punting for the Chargers. Punted in Lambeau. MBS this year. just won his second Super Bowl, so not a second bad Super pick. Bowl ring. Just couldn't good pick keep, in the fifth round. The guy on our team. That's a good pick in the fifth, fifth round. round. And yeah, he's basically their second starter, right? He's yeah. their he's their WR two, right? Pretty much. Essentially, I mean, Rasheed Rice really came on like towards the end. I mean, obviously, Kelsey is their number one target. But yeah, yeah, for yeah, Kansas yeah, City, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's done really good work. 
No doubt about it. Then EQ, EQ is on uh, the Lions, right? The, the, Still? the Browns. Oh, not the, the Browns, Browns, the Bears. Down in Chicago. Oh, Chicago. oh EQ's on Chicago the Bears. now? I thought he was on, the, I thought yeah. he was on Detroit. James no, Looney, no. whatever happened to that guy. Hunter Bradley. Uh, didn't, make, didn't make it out of camp. Kendall but those are seventh Donerson. round picks. I don't I don't remember yeah. Kendall Donerson. I'm gonna be honest. None with of these guys I completely forgot. Like, you know, about him. these seventh round picks, you're throwing darts. Like it can't be, you know, you can't hold on and go, oh my god, those are missed picks. It's like it's a seventh round pick. You're burning firewood right there. I will say before before we go on, I love the fact that not only did Brian select Jair Alexander with his first ever draft pick, like the first selection he ever made. But he traded with the New Orleans Saints prior to that selection. He tra- traded. Remember, they were at fourteen. Yeah, he, he traded down traded from fourteen picks, to twenty-seven. To twenty-seven, and got a couple, got another pick thrown in, and then he traded up with the Seahawks to number eighteen, and that's where he selected Jair. Like the guy moved a little bit up and down the board and gathered up another first round pick in the process, which is I mean, how he I got. Think sometimes Savage, people forget basically. Yeah, yeah. I think sometimes people forget that, but it's like, you know, yeah, Jair was his first pick after maneuvering the draft board and getting another first round pick. That's pretty impressive. That's good work right there. So 2018, you know, not a lot to say. What did we get for MBS? We got a trade for him. We traded somebody. Nothing. He, no, he left in free agency. They got. They ended up getting a compensatory pick, but that's about it. Mm. Gotcha. So a whole bunch of nothing. Um, it's interesting <laughs> that we weren't. It's interesting we weren't able to keep him, but it was be more. The, it was more a cap. And well, it, it's too. the cap thing. I mean, you got to remember he. Op- a hundred percent. The Packers had, and I remember doing the video for it. Wanted to keep him. They told him they they a hundred percent wanted him to be on the team. But he knew if he hit the market, he and his reps knew if he hit the market, he was going to get paid at least ten mil a year. And the Packers just didn't have that kind of space for a guy who was a complimentary piece at best, right? And look, he is getting paid ten plus a mil a year to make what two or three catches a game. Essentially, yeah. now every once in a while, there's a big kind of dagger deep shot at the end of the game that we've seen a couple times from Mahomes. Yeah. But for the most part, it's not like this monster contributor. It's just where the two teams were as far as what they had available cap wise. Obviously, where the Packers are now, you don't hate it. But at the time, no. you really felt that pain Rogers last year. That's where it hurt because, you know, that's when you had to make turn the page. No Devontae Adams. You got. Dobbs and Watson, etc., could have really used MVS that year. But I understand why they didn't kind of break that mold and try and like make a kind of exception in their salary cap for MVS. I, I'll, I'll, I'll always understand that. So you know, I don't know what the normal is, but like, okay, he got he got EQ, MVS, and Oren Burks are still in the league, and everybody else is kind of. No. J.K. Scott, J.K. Scott, still punting. J.K. I will Scott say, still like, in the league. Yeah, he, like I just said, he's part for the punt. He, the Chargers. He was in Lambeau this year. He sucks. You forget, but <laughs> he sucks. But twenty nineteen. One thing. Exactly. Wait, one thing to remember because you just asked, like, what's the normal, right? Rom Wolf famously said, "If you can bat three hundred for your career as a general manager, as far as just finding long term starters in the draft, three hundred. Just finding three starters essentially in the draft for your entire career, you're probably going to, you know, not only win a lot of games, but you, there's a good chance you're going to end up in the Hall of Fame because that's how hard it is. It's really difficult consistently finding long term answers in the draft. Everyone wants to like rip apart Goody and the Packers, but it's like this is league wide. This is how much of a crapshoot it ultimately is. And yes, some teams have good stretches where they find people. Good time, good draft classes, which the the Packers have kind of seemingly, hopefully, found here as of you know late. But man, especially given the fact that the Packers have almost always been drafting later in the first round, the fact that they found as many kind of long term starters and or contributors as they have, it, that's a pretty good feather in Goody's cap, no question about it. So. You know, well, given that, if it's three, then I would say really MVS and Jair are the only two real starters. 
I mean, EQ is kind of a agreed. Uh, Oren Burks is a, is, no, he's a depth no. piece. Oren Burks is and, and a, a, literally Punter a depth is, piece. Punter doesn't count. Punter is so a punter. Count that. 2019. <laughs> All right. So 2018. Thank you. We got Jair. Hopefully, uh, you know, he stays on the team next year and we uh, move forward. He will. He will. He's not going anywhere. 2019. And we got the originally controversial pick of Rashawn Gary, which a lot of Packer fans did not initially like, but has turned out to be crazy, right? Human wrecking ball uh, with, uh, I believe he had the lar- I believe uh, uh, Rashawn had the highest amount of sacks. Did he have the highest amount of sacks this season for him? He had career sacks, I believe, this year. Yeah, career numbers um, is, is sacks career and numbers. pressures. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, and that was coming back from inch- an ACL. And I would call him a top 10 edge defender in the NFL. Agreed. Right? And he's paid as such. Uh, yes. And he uh, and he played he played in in more games than last year, a much better year this year for Rashawn, and uh, I think that's a good pick. So that's an A. Then uh, Darnell Savage, <laughs> Darnell Savage this year came up. Last year was kind of not the year that was promised. Uh, so no, really, it's been yeah. like a couple years now since he's really kind of done a couple years, and then I, I would say the last three games of. Uh, the Packers season this year, he really did come up. That's I thought he was really they good down him. the. He was good down the stretch this year until the 49ers game. It all fell apart for him in that game. He, he reverted to yeah. every bad habit and every kind of, you know, problematic thing that has kind of plagued him since Joe Barry came into town. Now, here's my one kind of to your point: why they might keep him right because he was on a bit of an upswing and seemed to be ascending when Petten was the D defensive coordinator certainly took a pretty significant dip all three years under Joe Barry, but maybe with a new scheme, new emphasis, a guy they know really well, maybe they do like sign him to an extension at some point and keep him around because God knows they're going to need help at the safety spot. And then uh, with the, so we, so we got the double picks there, right? We got Darnell Mm -hmm. was the pick that was the Jair trade up and then down. Or down yep, and then up, yep. excuse me. Then, well, and remember, uh, the Packers Jenkins... traded. The Packers traded to get to that pick. They traded with the Seahawks. That's where they. That, that's where they got oh, yeah. Savage at twenty-one. Picks number thirty, one fourteen, and one eighteen. So yeah, there you go. So thirty was the one that they traded uh, down and then up Correct. for, basically. Yeah. Uh, yep. So then, pit round two, Elton Jenkins. So Elton Jenkins. Mm-hmm. Uh, Let's I go. will say this, uh, Wendell Ferraro, who writes for us uh, for Cheesehead TV, he has Elton Jenkins as the in 2022 as his number two draft, number two all around Brian draft pick. Um, and I Brian, know, right? This is from a couple years ago, but uh, Elton Jenkins, I mean, pretty solid uh, number two pick, all pro level player. Um, yep. You know, you never, you, it, it, I, nothing but good things to say. So there you have like three starters on the current team in the first three picks yep. of 2019. 2019 is looking good. And then uh, we turn the corner to Jay Sternberger, <laughs> and everything <laughs> falls apart. Because and then, then it all Jay falls S- apart. Shout Jay out, Jay Sternberger. We love you, Jay. We love you, Jay. So just didn't work Kiki out Kiki is Ki- I wanted Kiki. I wanted Kiki to be good uh, so bad just because I wanted to so say bad, Kiki all right? the time. Yep, what, yep, what, yep. Is he still in the NFL? No, right? I don't think so. I don't think so. No. Kadar Holman, who is in the NFL still, I believe. Um, I believe he's with the Texans still. He might yeah. not be though. After that, I, I'm not sure. I know that's where he ended up initially, but he might not still be there. I'm not. I'm not entirely sure. Dexter Williams, who got some play, uh, he was with us Porter, for a Nomer, couple years. Notre Dame right? running back, yeah. And then they brought him back. Remember, they brought him back. Yeah, that's he, right. He had that, the green hair. I he, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then. Uh, Ty Brandy's Summers. favorite. Ty Summers. Ty Summers. The uh, you know what's so funny is like Ty Matthews. was fine. He was fine as like a a, a uh, special teamer, right? A, a guy you can count on to do what's asked of him on special teams. But I will always remember when he had to go in down in New Orleans. They lost, I think, both backers in that game, and Ty had to play significant minutes, and it was ugly. It was as ugly as you could possibly imagine, as probably you remember. It was uh, like there were so many plays where he was just like, "What? Who? What? What? Kamara's got the ball? What?" Like, yeah, no, it was it was not great. But he's still in the league. Somebody, he's still in the league. 
Somebody said I, I I looked at the chat. Unfortunately, somebody said my Brock Purdy Why? take was was moronic. And here's the thing: if Jordan Love <laughs> was playing on the 49ers during the Super Bowl, they would have mm-hmm. won. So Brock Purdy sucks. This is so true. That's my this logic. Is true. Okay. I don't know about the last part. So but the first part is true. Did yeah. did would a better quarterback have won the 49ers that game because they would have made better Probably. throws? Yes. Probably. Yes. Yeah. So, yes. So you can say my take is moronic. Go start your own show, and then I will get on the chat, <laughs> and I will tell you you're a moron. All right, here we go. 2020. Well 2020. All right. The, the, the most controversial draft of Brian's career up until this year. Uh, up until this year. As far as like how up controversial. Until, I'd say week 11 of this year. <laughs> No doubt. So we had pick number 30 and number 136. Yep. We give it to the Dolphins to get 26. And who do we take? Yep. One Jordan, Jordan Love. Love. I'm going to I'm going to put that I'm going to give that an A. I'm going to give that a I'm gonna A. Give pick. That a W. It took I don't know about grading, it takes a lot but I'm of balls. give it a W. It takes a lot of balls. Yep. You have to really know what you're doing. You have to really be have solid strategy, not tactics. And, uh, you know, I'm always loving when a Packers GM takes a quarterback. And I, and I actually think we should take more quarterbacks, to be honest with you, because it's never a bad idea Agreed. to have quarterbacks in your back pocket. Totally agree. Uh, so then then another controversial pick to a lot of people, especially PFF, A.J. Dillon <laughs> in round two. Okay, so, can I say something that's a bit con- maybe a bit controversial? Now, PFF didn't have him on the board at all as a draftable player, which – Yes, is fucking insane, right? We all know how talented AJ is. We've seen his work, blah, 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 blah. But I will say, all the nerds and all the analytics folks and everybody talking about, oh, that's way too early to draft a running back, I think they were kind of right. I don't want to, like, tell tales out of school, but I think they were kind of right. That's all I want to say. Why? Why do you say that? Because the value is just exponentially higher for almost not every but almost any other position and i understand the idea of aj dillon being someone that the packers really liked they tracked him throughout his entire collegiate career but man as far as positional value pick 62 overall that's a top 100 pick on a running back who was going to be a timeshare to begin with i don't know man that's feels a little rich he was a little rich. I hear that. I hear that. I mean, I don't understand why running backs are so undervalued. I would say that Aaron Jones, and I get it on the draft, right? I, these are two different things I'm saying, right, by right. the way. I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm actually, I get, I get what you're con- saying. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually conflating something right now, but I, but I mean like, <laughs> so on the one side, you know, mm. I would say that Aaron Jones is probably the second most valuable person on our roster. And they got him in the fifth round. You know what I mean? That's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, it's just – and look, it, that's not it, normal, it's never, it though, is a crapshoot. Eh, maybe not normal, but you can find real great players. I mean, we got Donald Driver in the seventh round. That's not normal. I know, you but know? that's a major outlier. It's Brad, uh, Tom Brady in the sixth, total outlier, blah, blah, blah. Like, I'm not saying, like, oh, don't worry about it. You can do that on day three. I'm not saying that. But I am saying, positional value-wise, I understand where the nerds are coming from. I kind of get it. Kind of get it. I'm gonna give. I'm gonna give that pick a. We'll give that pick a C. I mean, I know we're not grading right now. We're just talking through it. So uh, right. then we go down you the list. Okay, your so we got a. You do whatever you want. We got it's a big show. win. Well, now I believe you can grade now because it's been three years. So I'm okay with it. So that's then a very we got, good point. Uh, very good point. The biggest bust of the round. Well, the second biggest bust. Oh of the round. Jesus, Josiah oh, Deguara still on our team. I don't Ooh. know why. Let's get rid of him. Cut him. Probably not for long. Probably not for long. Oh, he sucks. Yeah, that's uh, he doesn't that's suck, t- but he's not good. He's just not a good blocker. Just yeah, the I love fact that, that your craft whole and analysis <laughs> comes down to he sucks. I just <laughs> this I is the thing. Like that? Tucker Craft and Musgrave became right. better blockers right before our eyes. Overnight, it's like Josiah right? Deguara. <laughs> like it took Josiah Deguara three years and never to not, not reached be the good. level that either one of those guys did. <laughs> that is kind of insane. The fact that they took Deguara with pick ninety four, a top one hundred pick. And this dude can't block to save his fucking life. And that's all they ask him to do. It's not like he's out here 
running routes or trying to work downfield like Josiah. Go across the formation and take out this defensive end. Okay, I'll try. And then he rarely <laughs> does it, right? Like four years and he can't do that at a high level. Tucker Craft looked terrible at it last summer. By the end, he looked good. playoffs, he looks like a fucking baller. He looks like Gronkowski yeah. out there. Like, oh, Josiah. Yeah, that's a tough one. That's a tough pick. That is a tough then we pick. got Kamal Martin with uh, pick five, round five. Man, I will always say, I will always say, Kamal would have been a player if his knee hadn't gotten re-injured. Like, he was, I know they, they took a flyer on him, even with the injury concerns coming out of Minnesota. I really liked him as a player. I remember in training camp, he looked the part, and then he got hurt again, and then it was all over. But I like well, that Well, to be fair, to be to be somewhat fair to Deguara too, it's like he did. He had a serious a rookie injury, which kind of set his whole NFL career. Yeah, that's time, fine. So. It's been four years. Okay, all right. Totally. It's been enough time at this point. Then we got uh, the Packers fans' favorite offensive lineman, one John <laughs> Runyon. Runyon. Hey, I tell you what, sixth round, pick one ninety two. You get basically starter level play for four years they're probably gonna let him walk that's a good pick that's you talk about value that's a good pick right there no doubt about it. six rounder who starts well, for be, you for multiple in my years opinion, it'd, it's a good it pick. would be better if they want to keep them though it'd be better if like well hey, of course we let this naturally out. you know what i mean of course but they made a better so. pick later on in round three a couple years later who's going to Probably be the guy who takes his job, and that's fine. I have no problem. You invest in a third rounder who's going to eventually supplant the sixth rounder. I got, I got no problem with that. To be honest, I feel like in that draft, I feel like in the 2020 draft, we really sh- we tried, and Jake Hansen is our next con- contestant. Oh boy, uh, here yeah, we sir. did try for a center, but you almost feel like Goody should have tried to find somebody, some center at value in 2020. In 2020, yeah, maybe it's it's yeah. kind of a little bit sad that we didn't get a good center out of that draft. We needed it, and he knew we needed it. Yeah. You know, so it was like it definitely was a need. Yeah. Uh, then we got Simon Stepaniak. No idea if he's still playing in the NFL. Vernon no, Scott. Sir. He got hurt early. Safety. Vernon Scott, man, he was like on the fringes of the roster forever. But yeah, no, not not and not then a hit. Jonathan Garvin. So who you is, know we got. Who, I'm not who was counting on the roster, Josiah then, Aguara as a starter, but we did get three starters no, out of that. No, not a starter. Because we got, got three Runyon, starters, AJ no Dillon, and Jordan Love. But, you know, we had to wait on Jordan. So, and well, Which is fine, by the way. Also, 100 billion percent, Jordan Love makes this draft an A+, plus if he continues on the trajectory we saw at the end yeah. of this year. Like, it does, like all the rest of it is absolute gravy. Total yeah, gravy. And 100%. the fact that Brian would trade yeah. it up to get it, like, gravy. <laughs> Somebody said I heard Ty Summers was mentioned and men needed to check on Brandy. That's funny. All right, so here <laughs> uh, we go. Favorite, what I, that was favorite player. So that's everybody before, which you know, it's right. it's kind of crazy. Like it, what I like about talking about this stuff is like, okay, look, with Jair Alexander, Rashawn Gary, mm-hmm. Darnell Savage, Elton Jenkins, then Jordan Love, AJ Dillon, Josiah Deguara, and John Runyon. That's eight players in three drafts that still are playing on the Green Bay Packers, two to three of which mm-hmm. probably will get released. To probably will be so allowed to leave. That gives yeah. us, you know, so that gives us, and, you know, that's crazy. It's just something to think about when we're, you know, I know we know this every year because we're like, whatever happened to, but I, I do think it's interesting to kind of take a look back and be like, okay, well, how did we fare? So here we go, 2021, right. trade one, Packers trade picks number 92 and 135 for Titans pick 85 where we got one Amari Rogers before that, before that. So Ugh. Uh, Ugh. first, that's the one so the trade 20... they made. Yeah, that's the trade. Unfortunately, the 2021 draft started us with one Eric Stokes, um, who the jury's still out, right? I think we're going to see another year Very of much. Eric on our team. It's hard. It's hard with Stokes because you just don't know because of the injuries. The fact that he's missed so much time and then finally got back and then got hurt again and missed so much time and then got back and was shut down. It's just, I just, there's no way to have a real kind of bead on where Stokes is as far as his development, what he could possibly do for this team. Could he be 
an outside corner in this defense. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. At this point, well, he's a big It's really mystery. sad because he had a really good rookie year. So he looks so good his rookie year. The yeah. fact that Jair got hurt, which allowed him to play as much as he did, and you got to think there was that was not the plan, right? Like there was no way they went into that season, yeah, no way, his rookie season, saying, "Oh, we're going to play this rookie all these snaps on the perimeter." That was not the plan. But he was thrown in the fire, and he looked really good. But then you go to his second year, man. It does not look good, that first kind of part of the, like week one through eight, and then he gets hurt week nine in Detroit, and it's all been a mystery since then. So, yeah, I don't know, man. Yeah, and I kind of agree with some of the there. sentiment. I feel like they're probably going to be on the on – the, the, I don't know what the salary cap and ramifications are, but I feel like he's not going to mm-hmm. make the roster. Just because, you know, there's something that we talked oh, no. about at Patreon. I'd be surprised. Hour. No, he'll make the roster. I'd be shocked if he doesn't make the roster. I mean – uh, the, the injury shit notwithstanding, right? Like if there's some unknown medical thing going on, that you know, I just feel I like know. I just feel like there's something the upside, we learned the upside's this there. season. No, I hear that, mm-hmm. but there's something we learned this season that I hope that the Packers can continue to somehow traditionalize or uh, processize as part of their organization, and that is mm-hmm. an in pro personnel. Uh, 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 look at the play of our wide receivers and our young players. I think if right. we really do a self scout of, you know, how the coaches were forced to use young guys, is there some way to institutionalize that and really focus nice. on that? Yes. So that rather can, than yeah. trotting out the fucking Dean Lowry's of the world because they've got experience over the Devontae Wyatt's of the world. Like look, yeah. I understand if you're an old head coach and you're like, you gotta earn it, whatever. But if there's obvious athletic upside, get that guy on the field over this worn, shop-worn vet who, yeah, you trust as a coach. God, Corey, I could not agree with that more, 100%. I don't know how you do it because you have to force your coaches to do it. It's like Brian can't really right. force the coaches to play the guys, right? He just has to give nope. them the guys, and then they got to do it. We're but back to the triangle. Like, We're back to the, the Yeah, the, the coaching the staff. The coaching staff just got to just be play, take more risks with their, their young players, I feel like. Um, and I, I, I feel like Matt had to learn that this year, definitely. Um, then we got round two, um, a pick that I would have said Your is boy. pretty much a bust Your boy. up until halfway <laughs> into the season. Uh, he definitely played somewhat lights out after having a pretty atrocious first half of the season this season yep. uh, for where he yep. needed to be. He really came on. That's Josh Myers. And uh, I think we found uh, the current. I think we found our our starting center. I think uh, him and Jordan found a way to figure stuff out. And um, I tell you, you know, what, he... what's interesting, what's interesting to me is he did absolutely improve. Right, you'd never found the consistency you want, but you definitely saw higher levels of play at points. But man, there's a dip in December after it looked like he had kind of figured it out. There's a dip starting with the Bucks game. Like that stretch, like, like that kind of end of the season stretch where all of a sudden it all kind of fell apart for him again. And then the Bears game, the Cowboys game, and even the 49ers game, he played pretty damn well. So it's like, it's just if they can find consistency with him, they've really got something long term, I think. To your point, I believe they think that's their kind of long term starter at center. But we'll see, man. If he has another kind of up yeah, and down watch. year. Maybe they start watch looking, Brian you know. draft a center this year. Draft though, a center, no yeah, what. exactly. I mean, get ready. Then we for this, got a, get ready Amari, for the future. Yeah. Amari Rogers, I uh, believe he's still playing. Oh in the NFL. boy, he's playing for Dallas, right? No, now. he's not. No, he went to the Texans and got released, and I don't think he's with a team right now. Oh, this is probably Brian's this. worst move. Trading up for Amari Rogers was probably. I mean, you know, it, it's hard to say definitively but that's I'm, probably yeah. his worst draft move i mean gotcha. it, it, it's exacerbated by the fact that aaron Rodgers forced the trade for randall cobb randall cobb comes in and basically does all the stuff you drafted amari Rodgers to do from scrimmage so he never yeah. gets the time they the also put him in putt returns which you know what is I mean? the wrong oh thing. which was they a forced disaster. him to do that disaster that him. yep that was disaster. I don't know about that. I feel like who's our field goal kicker? I've totally blanked on his name because I've basically Carlson. Hey, uh, he's dead to me. Anders Carlson. Yeah, Carlson. 
Okay, so mm-hmm. pretty much to me, Anders Carlson is the worst pick and Brian's worst pick. J.K. Scott is the right. second worst pick. It's a toss-up right. between them because, like, drafting a punter, you, I just want to hit you in the face when you draft a punter. I re- I just want <laughs> I, I, I get I, I I turn violent oh. and, and like it's just not good. But then, uh, yeah, I hear you, Amari Rogers. That'd probably be number three for me. That's so a tough uh, one. then we go down. We go down, and we've got uh, Royce Newman, everybody's favorite offensive oh lineman. My oh, my God, Lord. Royce Newman. The fact that he's, like, <sighs> been trotted out as a viable idea as, as far as the Packers and a starter and just playing NFL snaps is just fucking insane to me. It's insane to me. Go back and watch that first game against Detroit and enjoy the fruits of Royce Newman's labor. That's all I can say. And also, shout out to I mean, the weird that, kids. Thanks yeah. for joining the Care of the G Club. Appreciate you, buddy. The uh, then we got TJ Slayton, which uh, I feel like Slayton's, good pick. You know, he's good pick above a for body, a fifth rounder above a body. Yeah. Yes, totally agree. And then uh, Shamar pick. Jean Charles. And oh, then uh, every five Old years, you've got to take somebody by from Wisconsin because we're was I don't know why. <laughs> I have no idea why. But hey, this is what the Packers wait, do. Wait, wait, wait. Let's take the a bust from the... Wisconsin so that they can now, now, be shitty the fact and that we can get rid of them. Brian Gutekunst got a draft pick for him. It's still pretty amazing. Yeah. Come on. Now. Yeah, I'll take it. Yeah. And then, hey, here's a little – some bargain basement of this draft. Isaiah McDuffie, who go. came on strong this year. Yes, sir. I felt like, yes, especially uh, when he was given a chance to play late in the uh, season, he performed. And so that's, yes, that's a pretty did. good pick there at, Very round, much so. at, at number, round six. And then Kylan Hill rounding it out, who I believe is still in our practice squad. Yes? No, no. He's long gone. He got cut because of oh. his attitude. Lots of stuff going on behind the scenes. Uh, oh, Bad yeah. dude. Bad that, dude. Wilson, Wilson, took his, Wilson took his spot. Believe so. Th- this year, yeah. Yeah, this year. Yeah. Definitely. And uh, there we are. So, you know, let's look at – okay, so we got Jair, right? Well, I know I've counted this like four times, but Rashawn, Darnell, Elton. So that's four starters, 2018, 2019. Right. And we got Jordan, AJ, Josiah. I want to throw him off, so that doesn't count. So that's uh-huh. seven. <laughs> Runyon is eight. Stokes is nine. Right. Myers is ten. Uh, Royce Newman, who I do not think is long for this team. I'm not counting him at 11. And then 11, mm-hmm. we'll have TJ Slayton and 12, Isaiah McDuffie. So that's 12, uh, 12 players contributors, who are still playing right? on our team, contributors to our yep. team, mostly starters out of three drafts. Mm-hmm. So, you know, pretty good. I think what we're going to see right. is – League oh, I think what we're going to see is 2020, 2018, 2019 weren't great drafts for us, um, but 2020 was a pretty good draft, and then we're going to see 2021 and potentially 2022 kind of really show the genius of well, you, you and I will, will reconvene later this offseason prior to the draft to talk about the 2022 and 2023 drafts because that's where I think Brian has laid the foundation for a championship level squad. Now, who knows if they go on a run and make actually win it? I don't know. But, you know, both Rom Wolf and Ted Thompson had draft classes that solidified pretty much their core, right? That became the core of their program that went on to win a Super Bowl. I think Brian's done that these last couple of years, but we're not looking at that tonight. We're just looking at everything up to 2021. So there you have it. You ready? Love it. Absolutely love it. I am ready. Let's hit it. Let's get to it. Let's do it. This week in the Packer Blogosphere. That's right. It's this week in the Packer Blogosphere, the return of that venerable series. I also love that it's this week in the Packer blogosphere when we haven't been on the air for like multiple weeks. So there's a lot of stuff we could have highlighted, but uh, we'll try to keep it current. Starting with Tom Grossi, friend of program, being named NFL Fan of the Year. Look at him. Come on. Living the dream. Although maybe not currently because I know he has COVID at the moment. But look at him out in Vegas. Having a great time, being named fan of the year, being on stage at the NFL Honors. Man, Tom, we love you, brother. 
So proud of you. So proud of all the work you do in the name of Packers fans. The fact that you did what you did this past summer, the 31, 30 stadiums 30 in 30, 30. days. Yeah. Man, that was awesome. Just amazing work. Uh, and I love that the, the NFL got you seats for the Super Bowl akin to Jordan Love's family. That's amazing. Proud That's of you, cool. brother. Really proud of you. He got to meet Jordan Love. I'm very jealous of that. It's cool. Well, Jordan get Love Jordan Love over video. to the house. Don't worry. We're going to so get Jordan cute. Love over to the house. Like you, you know that'll happen. That, that was that cool. Will happen. I, I actually, very I, cool. hopefully he doesn't, hopefully uh, Tom doesn't, to, hopefully he remembers, and we have a standing meeting scheduled tomorrow, so hopefully he feels up for it because, you know, I've got some, I got He's some content way too ideas. Big time for us now. He ain't making that meeting. You're going to be like sitting there on the uh, Zoom all by yourself waiting for Tom to show up. I don't believe. I don't. I don't. I don't think that's very nice to say that. I don't think that's what's going to happen. <laughs> so. Okay, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, we will. Um, oh, we will. One other thing. One other thing. Uh, it, here in the Packer blogosphere, I love and I'm Corey. I. I'm, I'm going to underline, I'm going to italicize. I love the tradition in Green Bay of head coaches doing local commercials. There is no better thing. I love it. Absolutely. And I do, in, in all seriousness, I am kind of joking, but I will say in all seriousness, I do love that Matt has made Bell and Health kind of his partner here, the things that he has done year after year, highlighting something in tune with, you know, parents and kids especially teenagers where i think you know as far as our societal conversation teenagers are often oh it's yes very worrisome and yes we have to take care of the the kids but that so rarely turns into any kind of meaningful action matt has clearly kind of made this a, a priority uh, with his partnership with bell and health and i i wanted to play this commercial that debuted during the super bowl let's take a look Things aren't quite right. The results can be less than ideal. You all belong here. We just need to make a few adjustments. All right, everyone, we're going to get you in the right place. Bell and Health has created places that kids and teens feel are just right for them including a place where teens are treated like teens for the things that teens need help with. Coach, I believe this is yours. From band student to rock star, there's only Bell and Health. I just love it. I know the commercials are all easy. He's done better. Easy, he's, but he's no, done no, better. Like the one last be year was There's better. There's been some better. The one last year yeah. was better. But I just love that that's the emphasis. As his a father of teenagers ones the, his cell come ones it. are the awesome ones. Though. And honestly, if he would have made that many adjustments in uh, in during Packers oh, games, be he might nice. Have won the Super be Bowl. nice. Oh, might have won the Super Bowl there, Coach. Maybe maybe uh, oh, make some right. adjustments in the game. See, huh? this is what's gonna happen now. Now, whoever his little <laughs> his assistant or whoever it is who cuts like all the stuff we ever say that's negative uh, or nitpicky or whatever is gonna send funny. him that. It's fine. No, he, he, it's we were doing fine. well. He knows we were I'm doing so joking. well. He knows I'm just joking, yeah, Nagler. Right. He knows me. Come on. No, does he though? Um, does he? I'm not so sure. He does. I'm not so sure. All right. We'll he does. He knows I'm a, he knows how I am. For sure. We actually yeah. talked about it. We talked about it a couple times. That's good. That's good to hear. I, I, I literally it. told uh, him like do not believe a word that comes out of my mouth. I've told him that many times. So <laughs> there you go. Um finally, I think you have something you want to highlight here because goodness gracious, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Corey Banky's garden. That's where it's at. You want to talk about the hotness. It's right behind Banky's shoulder uh, on the ground there. Outside of Lambeau Field, I actually have some. There's some. I I I took over the set. I got some um, uh, chervil. Chervil's growing right here behind me. Chervil. Uh, yeah. All let's. Right. We got some video for this, right? Lambo lemon Re drop, baby. Well, we have we have a graphic. There we go. We have Lambo nice. lemon drop. So you want to get it from uh, Firecracker Farm, people. 
so yeah, so I grew I grew some lemon drop uh, peppers, which are like 30,000 Scoville. They're from South America, and I've actually got them hibernating right now. And so what you're looking at is I dehydrated the peppers, ground them up, sent them to Firecracker Farm. Firecracker Farm takes them, does their magic with them, and turns them into hot salt. So what you're seeing, it's salt you actually put on. It's really good. It's got like a lemon pepper flavor, not crazy hot. Uh, we sold like 30 so far. There's only like a limited run of 100. So I was talking to Firecracker Farm today, and I was like, hey, we're doing the show today. So just wanted to let everybody know. And if you use the code uh, LAMBO, you can uh, get 15% uh, off, I believe. 15% off? off use, there is a uh, link Lambo. in the description of this video. If you go down on YouTube in the description, there's a link to Firecracker Farm. And as Corey says, use code Lambo for fifteen percent off. And it's dude, yeah, and it, it's, it's really good actually. It's, it's totally really legit. good. He they do a really good job. Like they're hot salt. Like if you like really hot things, they're real. They have one that's like it's like ghost pepper. It's like the three hottest peppers in the world as a hot salt, and it is frick. You you literally put some on your salad, and it's like it's crazy hot. But the Lambo <laughs> lemon drop is not so hot. It's somewhere between like a jalapeno and. Um, a habanero, so it's not crazy hot, but uh, it's really good. If you guys like uh, that kind of stuff, you can taste a little uh, from the garden. And we're, I'm doing so many little Lambo peppers. love. Doing, like doing yeah. If you type in Lambo lemon drop, you will see it on the internet. So thanks everybody supporting us. Good and stuff, uh, yeah, buy it. Absolutely. I think uh, some folks like have it. have submitted some super chats that we need to get to. Super chats here on the YouTube channel. William Saunders, evening Packers fan, watching from my work desk. Thanks for everything, Cheesehead TV. Thank you, thank you, William. Thank you, William. Appreciate it. Smalls, oh boy, now Nicolay's got billboards on the internet. <laughs> they got billboards everywhere. And <laughs> Pierce, everywhere. happy that Steve McMichaels entered the hall. Better stats than Howie Long. Even changed my mind on Devin Hester. Bear sucks, so might as well toss him a bone. Thanks for super chat, Ed. One way of looking at it, Devin Hester. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about Devin Hester. It's kind of weird. but uh, It's ridiculous like, uh, that he's in before some other people who didn't make it, like Antonio yeah, Gates. Julius That's Peppers, where, though, is pretty, pretty awesome. I like the Julius It's Peppers. dope as hell. No doubt. Uh, Cheeto0218. What's up, Banky? Not Nagler. Cheeto like, joins him. me every day on – he. no, he joins me every day on Packers Daily, so I think he's giving you his love right now. Got it. Mimsy, $2 to text MLF the Wasted Timeouts Valentine. Oh, I need to do that. Someone else asked me if I was going to text it to him. I, I I will right now. Here we go. Do it. Massimiliano, I mean, keep going. Mark Gagliotti, get ready for 2024 season. It's going to be fire. Go, Pack, go. Thank you so much for the Come super on, chat. Em. Appreciate it. JP, as fun as the 12 era was, it was an era filled with missed opportunities, disappointment. Team has to show up more often in big games and at least have a pulse on defense. Can't waste this new window. Thank you, JP. Appreciate Word. it and couldn't agree more. J. Cole, want violence and good tackling on defense? I would take the safety Bullock out of USC and the CB Green out of FSU. Also, I like Dijon, but he's not making it to us. Thanks for the tips. Dijon. Um, Dijon. And sorry. This, this, every year someone's like, oh, he's Jean. never going to be there. Don't be he's never going to be there guy because ultimately, A, you have no idea, and B, you're usually wrong. Like, it's not that simple ever ever aaron harper thanks for the super chat appreciate it mike witt any plans on carry the g radio show with bill from the combine great question yes sir we will be there all throughout that week by the way matt literally just answered lol i don't know how to feel about this <laughs> i'm 100 percent. i literally just texted it to him and he instantly responded, "I don't know how I feel about this." So there you go. Give everybody there Matt. Give everybody Matt's number so they can text him. Just kidding. No, uh, that's JP, not thanks for the super chat. Hopefully Watson and Stokes stay healthy and have nice seasons. If that happens, Corey having to say something nice about UW Madison would be funny. That would I'll, be fun. Here's the thing: I will have something nice to say about UW Madison when I don't have to watch a game, and it says. Wisconsin on the left and Green Bay on the right. I'll change my tune on Madison if they just do something right for the world. Very interesting. Just do something right for a change, Madison. Do something for Green Bay once in your life. How about that? How about that? <laughs> That's all we got. It. That's it. We're good.
I love it. Let's give a shout out to our Patreon members all over the world, literally. Love you guys. You guys are the lifeblood of what we do at Cheesehead TV, as well as the Carry the G Club members here on YouTube. You guys, thank you so much for showing up every week. We had a great happy hour on Tuesday. Uh, if you guys are interested in any way, shape, or form, you can join here on YouTube for the Carry the G Club membership, or you can go to patreon.com slash cheesehead TV. Uh, it's just a great community, and it's die hard Packers fans. My gosh, the conversations we have and the, like the stuff that gets mentioned from years and years ago that an entire group of people can be like, oh, yeah, I remember that. It's just the best. I love it. I love it. Got one one last uh, uh, chat. Carl Van Beckham, thank you right. for the super chat. Thanks for last season and everything you do, guys. We're going to need your content for this long off season. Cheers. Thanks, Carl. Appreciate the support. That's why we're here, Carl. And, um, yeah, I would agree on do. the Patreon happy hour. I feel like more people are on on the off season than the off. We had two pages of Zoom on that thing. It was crazy. Yeah, yes. Like, Tuesday was nuts, right? Like, I was yeah. kind of surprised at how filled up We went it was. for an was, hour and a half, cool. and we tried to go for an hour. It yeah. was like an hour and 40 minutes. It was crazy. It was great. So, yeah. It's great. It's, a, it's, a, it's just a great community. If you need a respite from life uh, as a Packers fan, highly recommended. Got anything else to define folks scream, at home? If you want to hear me scream <laughs> about things like Dean Lowry and get mad about him, then this Patreon happy hour is <sighs> for you. Yeah, this is definitely for you. No doubt about it. That'll do it for this episode of Packer Transplants. We'd like to thank everyone who makes Cheesehead TV part of their daily Packers routine. We are and will always be devoted to Packers fans worldwide. I think it's a fluid situation. And we're, we're I know you guys love it, especially Nagler. I can see you smirking at me right there. Uh, we're going to take it one day at a time. And, uh, <laughs> and just, it's going to be fluid, though. That's all I can tell you.